Hello, hello, hello. This is Stories for Kids with Morel podcast. Ring a ding, ding a ding, ding a ding. It is story time. It is story time, and I hope that you are sitting very comfortably. And I have my little birdie friend come along. Hello, birdie. How are you today, birdie? Fine, thank you, says birdie. Birdie, what is the story? A story? Yes, a story, birdie. What is the story? The story is about the monkey, monkey, shark, and the washerman's donkey. The monkey, the shark, and the washerman's donkey. Wow. Let's begin the story. But before I start the story, yes, we know there's a monkey. And we know that monkey likes, what does monkey, what do they like to eat? Um, Oh, bananas. Yes, bananas. And they also like, they like nuts. And there is in the story a lot of talk about the makuyu tree. Yeah, what is that? Makuyu tree. M K O O Y O O. Yeah, I pronounce it Makuyu tree. And I think in that tree, there are lots of nuts. The Kuyu nuts. K O O Y O O. The Kuyu nuts. I think our monkey loves kuyu nuts. So, and by the way, there are lots of nuts, lots of nuts. I believe that there are about 17 different types of nuts, such as almond nuts, Brazil nuts, cashew nuts, Hazelnuts, hazelnuts, mmm, and uh, pecans, nuts, P E C A N S, pistachios, pistachios, P I S T A C H I O S, all different kinds of nuts. You could try to see. See if you can find some other nuts, the names of other nuts. But before you do that, let me tell you about the story. The story about the monkey, the shark, and the washerman's donkey. Let's go. Let's start. Okay, let me begin. Once upon a time, Kima the monkey, and Papa, the shark, became great friends. The monkey lived in an immense, that means a very, very large, an immense makuyu tree, which grew by the margin of the sea, half of its branches being over the water and half over the land. Every morning, when the monkey was breakfasting on the kuyu nuts, the shark would put in an appearance under the tree and call out, Throw me some food, my friend! With which request the monkey complied most willingly. This continued for many months, until one day, Papa said, Kima, you have done me many kindness. I would like you to go with me to my home that I may repay you. How can I go? said the monkey. We land beast cannot go about in the water. 
Don't trouble yourself about that," replied the shark. "I will carry you. Not a drop of water shall get to you." "Oh, all right then," said Mister Kima.、Uh, "Let's go." When they had gone about halfway. The shark stopped, and said, "You are my friend. So, I will tell you the truth. Why? What is there to tell?" asked the monkey with surprise. Well, you see, the fact is that our sultan is very sick. And we have been told that the only medicine that will do him any good is a monkey's heart.、Oh. Well, exclaimed Kima, you were very foolish not to tell me that before we started. How so? asked Papa. But the monkey was busy thinking up some means of saving himself, and made no reply. Well," said the shark anxiously, "why don't you speak?" "Oh, I've nothing to say now. It's too late. But if you had told me this before we started." I might have brought my heart with me. What? Haven't you your heart here? Huh? Said Kima. Don't you know about us? When we go out, we leave our hearts in the trees and go about with only our bodies. Ah,、oh, but I see. You don't believe me. You think I'm scared. Come on, come on, let's go to your home where you can kill me and search for my heart in vain. The shark did believe him, though, and exclaimed, "Oh no, no!、Uh, let's go back and get your heart." Indeed, no. Protested Kima. Let us go on to your home. But the shark insisted that they should go back, get the heart, and start afresh. At last, with great apparent reluctance, the monkey consented, grumbling sulkily at the unnecessary trouble he was being put to. When they got back to the tree, he climbed up in a great hurry, calling out, "Wait there, Papa, my friend, while I get my heart, and we'll start off properly next time." When he had got well up among the branches, he sat down and kept quite still. After waiting, what he considered a reasonable length of time, the shark called, "Come along, Kima." But Kima just kept still and said nothing. In a little while, he called again, "Oh, Kima, let's be going." At this. The monkey poked his head out from among the upper branches and asked in great surprise, "Go in? Where? To my home, of course. Are you mad?" queried Kima. "Mad? Why? 
what do you mean? cried Papa. What's the matter with you? said the monkey. Do you take me for a washerman's donkey? What peculiarity is there about a washerman's donkey? It is a creature that has neither heart nor ears. The shark, his curiosity overcoming his haste, thereupon begged to be told the story of the washerman's donkey. Which the monkey related as follows <laughs> Once upon a time, a washerman owned a donkey of which he was very fond. One day, however, it ran away and took up its abode in the forest. Where it led a lazy life and consequently grew very fat. At length, Songora, the hare, by chance, passed that way and saw Punda, the donkey. Now, the hare is the most cunning of all beasts. If you look at his mouth, you will see that he's always talking to himself about everything. So when Sungora saw Punda, the donkey, he said to himself, Oh my, my, this donkey is fat. Then he went and told Simba, the lion. Miss Punda, I'm sent to ask your hand in marriage. As Simba was just recovering from a severe illness, he was still so weak that he could not go hunting. He was consequently pretty hungry. Said Mr. Sungora, I'll bring enough meat tomorrow for both of us to have a great feast, but you'll have to do the killing. All right, good friend, exclaimed Simba joyfully. You're very kind. So the hare scampered off to the forest, bound the donkey and said to her in his most courtly manner, Miss Punda, I am sent to ask your hand in marriage. By whom? simpered the donkey. Well, by Simba the lion. Oh, the donkey was greatly elated at this and exclaimed, Oh, let's go at once. This is a first class offer. They soon arrived at the lion's home, were cordially invited in, and sat down. Sungora gave Simba a signal with his eyebrow to the effect that this was the promised feast. And that he would wait outside. Then he said to Punda, I must leave you for a while to attend to some private business. You stay here and converse with your husband, that is to be. As soon as Sungora got outside, the lion sprang at Punda and they had a great fight. Simba was kicked very hard and he struck with his claws as well as his weak health would permit him. At last, the donkey threw the lion down and ran away to her home in the forest. Shortly after, the hare 
came back and called. Hi, Simba. Have you got it? I have not got it, growled the lion. She kicked me and ran away. But I warrant you, I made her feel pretty sore, though I'm not strong. Oh, well, remarked Sangora. Don't put yourself out of the way about it. Then Sangora waited many days until the lion and the donkey were both well and strong. When he said, What do you think now, Simba? Shall I bring you your meat? Ah, growled the lion fiercely. Bring it to me. I'll tear it in two pieces. So the hare went off to the forest where the donkey welcomed him and and asked the news. You are invited to call again and see your lover, said Sangora. Oh dear, cried Punda. That day you took me to him. He scratched me awfully. I'm afraid to go near him now. Ah, oh, pshh, said Sangora. That's nothing, nothing. That's only Simba's way of caressing you, cuddling you. Oh, well, said the donkey. Okay, let's go. So off they started again. But as soon as the lion caught sight of Punda, he sprang upon her and tore her in two pieces. When the hare came up, Simba said to him, Take this meat and roast it. As for myself, all I want is the heart and ears. Oh, thanks, said Sangura. Then he went away and roasted the meat in a place where the lion could not see him. And he took the heart and ears and hid them. Then he ate all the meat he needed and put the rest away. Presently, The lion came to him and said, Bring me the heart and ears. Where are they? said the hare. What does this mean? growled Simba. Why, didn't you know this was a washerman's donkey? Well, What's that to do with there being no heart or ears? Oh, for goodness sake, Simba. Aren't you old enough to know that if this beast had possessed a heart and ears, it wouldn't have come back the second time? Of course, the lion had to admit that what Sangura the hare said was true. And now, said Kima to the shark, you want to make a washerman's donkey of me. Get out of there and go home by yourself. You're not going to get me again and our friendship is ended goodbye papa goodbye (laughs) oh buddy that's the end of the story yes (laughs) that is the end of the story 
Oh, wow. Let's see what learning we can get from that story. So I will be back. I will be back. And don't forget to find out the different types of nuts. Yes. See how many nuts you can name. Identify some nuts. I will be back with another story soon. So with me, Stories for Kids with Morale podcast, I will be back soon. Take care. Be good. Be very, 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 very good. Okay. Bye. Bye for now. Bye.